hot tub under the drums. Del Pedro's gone. I promise we won't keep you any more than that, uh, till Christmas at least. I must say, you're being very nice and patient for waiting so long. I think, I think you should uh, applaud yourselves for being so good. Yeah, let's hear it. Yeah, all right. Looks like it was just about ready now, really. Right?
Thank you very much. We're going to slow down and do this thing off the first album. I hope you like it's called Danger. Okay.
Just as soon as, uh, just as soon as we can, we're gonna do a track of the new album, a little bit of boogie called Two Rolling Stones.
is a bit of badness off that new album. This one's called Day of the Eagle. You better believe it.
Well, all right, here we are. And uh, sitting next to me is the uh, young man, I guess I should say young man, and uh, my name is Robin Trower. And uh, if you've uh, caught his new album, I'm sure you have been impressed, but uh, he's definitely not an overnight sensation. He's been with uh, Procol Harum many, many, many years, or he was anyway. How long ago did you break up with? Uh, um, I suppose it's about two and a half years now. Yeah. Them, yeah. Oh, welcome to Dallas, by Thank the way. Thank you very much. And the and the warmth of it all. Let me uh, take these off. Okay, and um, uh, just get started. But like, when did you start playing guitar? How old were you when you uh, picked think, up a guitar? Uh, I got my first one when I was about thirteen or fourteen. Christmas present, you know. Yeah. What thing. kind of guitar was it? Uh, it was. Um, it cost about twenty-five dollars. Not electric. No. <laughs> just. Uh, do you remember any of the tunes you were picking out then? Um. I was very, very into Elvis Presley at the time. I remember. Yeah. You know, I was, was, he, uh, was he an inspiration at the time? Yeah, I think uh, I think he inspired practically everybody who's in in rock music today to, mm -hmm. to start it up. You know, in one way or another. Anybody else? You, uh, I've, I've noticed a uh, a, uh, a certain similarity between you and uh, Jimi Hendrix. A yeah, Hendrix have... has been a very big influence on me. Yeah, very big influence. You were a big fan of his. Yeah, I would say you know that. Um, He's the only guitar player, really, since B.B. King, mm -hmm. that really uh, impressed me to the extent of, you know, feeling that uh, it was something new, something that had to be. Mm -hmm. What did you? How did you uh, get together with Procol Harum? Uh, do you remember that? Yeah, well, I was. Um, I had a three-piece of a blues band at the time, and they they had a number one record, White Shade of Pale, and they needed a guitar player. And I'd played with Gary previous when we left school. Just Gary Brooker. Time. Yeah. And um, he phoned me up and said, you know, do you want to join, you know? Mm -hmm. So I went and heard what they were doing. And I really thought, you know, that what I was doing could fit in nicely. And he thought so too. So um, we got together. How long were you with him? Four years. Yeah. How many albums do you have? Yeah, five albums. Yeah. yeah. Did, you, uh, did you feel stifled at all being, you know, I, I would imagine it eventually you did because you were split so yeah right. uh, well towards the end there i definitely felt that um i had more to say than that i was getting room to say you know within that context and uh, that last album i did with them uh, broken barricades you know i i did a lot of the work on that mm -hmm. you know? i wrote a few things and arranged a lot of the stuff you know and um that was really what what made me decide to leave and go on my own That's true. um See, the other guys in your band, I, was, I had to ask how to pronounce the name. There's uh, James Dewar and uh, Reg Isidore. Yeah, right. As in, what, what, how did you say to remember that? Isidore. When is a door not a door? <laughs> when he's adorable. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> a little English humor there, friends. Uh, how did, where did you meet these guys? Um, well, I was working, when I left uh, Procol, I was working with a singer called Frankie Miller. Um, we was writing, and we decided to get a band together, which was a mistake. But um, through Frankie, I found Jimmy, you know. Uh, he came in as first as a bass player, and then I discovered he had uh, great vocal talent as well. Mm -hmm. So when I, when I sort of split away from Frankie and that, I decided to have a trio and asked Jimmy to stay with me. Mm -hmm. And then Reggie was the first drummer we tried out. So Where did he just, come from? Any... He was a session drummer in London at the time. Mm -hmm. Did, uh, do you ever do any vocals? No, I mean a lot of people don't realize that uh, James Dewar does the vocals on your uh, albums. They just assume that it's Robin Trower, that it's uh, yeah, Robin right. Trower doing the singing. No, um, I d I only, the only time I sing is when I'm sort of teaching Jimmy to sing the, the songs. You know, yeah. um, oh. he's so much better singer than I am that it would be silly for me to, you know, get compared to him. You know, <laughs> you so I just leave it out. You know. Like uh, when you're not uh, playing and uh, practicing, what do you what do you like to do to relax? And, uh... um, well, I watch a lot of soccer when I'm at home. I'm a big soccer fan. That's uh, a big becoming a big story, uh, sport over here. It's just uh, just it It's momentum. the best ball game in the world, isn't it? Yeah, do you play? I used to play, but they don't let me play anymore. Mm -hmm. they're, they're frightened they might get damaged or something. <laughs> Insurance on your fingers yeah, right. and everything. Yeah. Uh, but uh, when you're not, uh, you know, when you're relaxing uh, and listening to music, who do you like to listen to? Well, recently I've been listening a lot to Donny Hathaway. Huh. He's been, uh, you know, getting through to me quite a lot. I'm, in fact, there's a song on, on the uh, new album called In This Place, which I I don't see that song existing if I hadn't have heard Donny Hathaway first, you know, so he's been an influence on me mm -hmm. recently. 
before that, I used to, I used to listen to um, mostly Chicago blues men and um, Hendrix, of course, I used to listen to. Anybody but, today other than Donny Hathaway? Um, not not in the rock field at all, really. No, not, not particularly. So that it comes on really strong. Although I do l listen to quite a lot of different stuff, you know. I bought the Pink Floyd album, mm -hmm. which, you know, is unusual for me to buy anything by a white artist. I enjoyed that. I thought it was a great album. Um, I was reading over here about uh, um, a gig that you did in Kansas City. Do you remember that? It was some ballroom, and they yeah, Cowtown. They only, they only, yeah, Cowtown. Yeah, Cowtown, and they yeah. only charged a dollar to get in. That's right. And how was that? That was great, actually. But we had a problem with um, the the hall itself was surrounded by about five radio stations, mm -hmm. and I was picking up most of them on my equipment. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it, you know, it was a bit bizarre, but we, we got by, just about. It was, uh, the fans were, uh, I'm sure, appreciative for a dollar. Yeah, they have a great audience. How did, how did they work out the, uh, the, do you make a certain percentage or uh, a flat rate? or? I think um, uh, the reason we did that was that it was the only way we could get to play Kansas City. You know, there wasn't um, a bill that we could go in on second. Uh, so we, to top the bill, we had to do it that way, you see, and go and, it was better to play that city mm -hmm. like that than not play it at all. I mentioned that because I, I really would like to see that happen around here. You know, it's, uh, <clears throat> they had a whole bunch of uh, big groups come through at, uh, it's called the Cowtown in Kansas City, and they only charged a dollar to get in, and of course they're going to sell out the place at a dollar. Yeah, right. Uh, and Robin Trower played there. Um, do you find the fans in uh, this country any different than in England or Europe? Oh, yeah. I mean, over here, they, they're much more willing to get involved in the music, you know, and uh, their reaction is, you know, is much stronger to what we're doing anyway. Here? You know? Yeah, much more. Uh, in England, they're a bit sort of clinical about it. You know, they sort of sit back and sort of watch rather than sort of become involved in and what's going on. Who's, uh, who's, who's big over there right now? Anybody? Well, there's sort of two, two different sorts of big. There's the, um, what they call the top 30, or top 20 stuff, you know, which is uh, top of the pops stuff, and that's Gary Glitter and T-Rex and Slade and people like that. And then singles. You know, yeah, singles stuff. And then you have, uh, you know, people like Pink Floyd and um, Jethro Tull and stuff like that, an album's market, they're also very big, you know. Do you have uh, some place you like to go to write your music? You have, uh... No, nowhere in particular, just where I can pick up a guitar, really, you know, and... Uh... Do you write it down on paper or anything? Oh, no, no, yeah. I usually put it on tape if I get any ideas, I put it on a cassette and... Anything that uh, you can re re remember that uh, inspired any of your songs on uh, Bridge of Sighs? Bridge of Sighs, what, uh, what, what does that mean? Um, well, actually, it's just, it's... A, it's a bridge. It yeah. is an actual bridge in Venice, you know. Oh. And uh, it's quite a famous bridge. And uh, mm -hmm. I just thought it was a beautiful phrase, really. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, it was a song, and uh, it made a very nice album title, really. That's... There's nothing sort of a... Uh, it works. Yeah, yeah, there's nothing sort of devious about the uh, no, meaning was... of it, you know. <laughs> Um, uh, Matthew Fisher has produced uh, both your albums. He used to be with uh, Procol Harum too. Why did you choose him? Um, well, I liked uh, the production on Salty Dog. He produced Salty Dog for Procol. And uh, he's a good friend of mine, and I thought we'd have a nice time working together, really. That was the main thing. Hmm. Does he go around with you on uh, no, tours no. or anything? Just... He's getting his own band together at the moment, actually. But uh... oh, just, I just remember his last album was... Uh, it, uh, did you notice? I, I don't know. I listened for production and, and things like that, and I thought that the second one was a little more, a little solid, just there. I think more the production presence. improved tremendously from the first album to the second album. Is he producing yeah. anybody else? Um, I think he's produced a couple of other small acts for for that label, Chrysalis label, mm -hmm. you know. But um, he's only really interested in producing me and uh, doing his own thing, really, because otherwise he wouldn't have enough time, you know, to do mm -hmm. it properly. Let's see who you're playing. I see tonight over in uh, Fort Worth, and uh, be with uh, Ten Years After and King Crimson. Is, uh, have you been doing gigs with them? We've done a lot of work with King Crimson, but uh, we've only done this is this will be our third day with uh, Ten Years After, and we're just doing all over Texas with that, that group, you know. And uh, then we'll be going off with somebody else. Have know. you toured alone in this in the United States before? Um, well, this is our 
I suppose it's, you could call it our third tour, really. We came here before Christmas, you know, did two short tours, very c close together, you know. And, uh, Is there any, play, any place that stands out in your mind? Is there uh, any city or... or yeah, San Francisco. Much? San Francisco for us is definitely the... Really? The, the great, you know, place for receptions and selling albums and everything, you know. It's yeah. just a great place for us. Hmm. Well, what do you uh, What do you want to do with yourself? Are you, you know, keep playing guitar or you want to produce or... Uh, yeah, I would like to produce um, eventually, you know. Um, at the moment, I'm still sort of trying to play the guitar a bit, you know, but I would like to get into that eventually. I'm interested in that. I see. Well, listen, I really uh, thank you for stopping by. We're going to do a couple tunes here. Uh, this one uh, reminds me of Jimi Hendrix. Um, yeah, well, it, Song for a Dream was written as a tribute to Hendrix. That's, yes. You know, Keith and I mm -hmm. wrote it especially for that. You know, It was that song, really, that, that made me decide to go on my own and... Okay, well, I look forward to seeing you tonight with okay. uh, King Crimson and uh, I'll lead 10 years after at uh, Tarrant County Convention Center. And uh, this is from uh, Broken Barricades, Robin Trower and Procol Harum.